What a transition by Sam Calder. I'm excited to announce that we are gonna create this amazing Sam Calder masking Luma Freight transition inside Premiere Pro. Although I have already shared a tutorial for the same transition on this channel, today's version will be the updated one. To make this transition, let's jump into Premiere Pro first. You can see three videos on the timeline in Premiere Pro. The first one features a car running on the road. The second one is similar, showing forest zone footage without a road. The third footage displays a beach scene, also recorded by a drone. If I play all the footage simultaneously, you'll notice that they are drone footage moving in the same direction at the same speed, which is important for creating this kind of complex transition. I know you have already started thinking about how to manage these footage, but don't worry. In the next tutorial, I'll share details about these videos and I'll include the link in the description of this video. Now we need to place the second footage underneath the first turn on the timeline. Then you have to draw a marks around this area for the Luma Fade transition. To do this, go to the effects tab and search for the gradient wipe effect. Once you find the effect, apply it to the second layer of the video on the timeline. Next, navigate to the effect controls panel and place the time indicator at the first frame of the video. Then select the pen tool under the gradient wipe effect and draw a marks on the specific area of the video. To make it easier, change the zoom level of the program monitor from fit to 25%. Now double click on the name of the program monitor to preview it in full screen. Click at the top to set the first masking point. The second point will be set just below the frame. Set the next few masking points following the road. To complete the drawing of the marks, just follow along with this tutorial. So the first step of drawing the mask is complete. In the second step, you need to zigzag this masking line to match it with the shape of the trees in the four stone footage. Start by adding the points to the masking line and adjust their positions to change the shape of the masking line. Take your time to make the shape better, ensuring that the transition will be eye-catching. As this is a tutorial, I'm moving quickly. After completing the left side of the line, proceed to adjust the right side of the line accordingly. When masking is done, it's time to refine it further. Once again, double click on the name of the program monitor to preview it in normal mode. Now click the stopwatch marks path to set a keyframe at the first frame. Then click on the track selected marks forward icon to initiate the motion tracking process in Premiere Pro. It may take a few seconds to complete the tracking. Next, click on marks 1 to enable it and move the time indicator to observe the tracking. For this kind of simple tracking, Prima Pro works very effectively. This time we need to make some changes to the masking keyframes. To do this, select the effect controls tab and hit the accent key located below the scap key to view the tab in full screen mode. Now we have to delete all keyframes of the mask except the first and last ones as this will help us adjust the masking points more easily when needed. Zoom in as needed, then select all keyframes at the beginning part except the first one and delete them. Repeat the same process for the keyframes at the ending part. Again hit the accent key to return to the normal layout. You'll notice only two keyframes in the effect controls panel. Now click on the right arrow icon to navigate to the last keyframe. Adjust the masking points around the road as needed. Once adjustments are complete, move the time indicator to ensure everything looks good. Next change zoom level to fit. If it appears that masking line around the road is not quite right, adjust the zoom level of the program monitor again. Then click on the left arrow icon to select the first keyframe and reposition the masking points around the road. After that back to the zoom level fit. In this step, move the time indicator to the right of three frames to add the first keyframe of transition completion. Keep the value of this keyframe at 0%, then move the time indicator to the right by 1 second, which will be the duration of the Luma fade transition. Now increase the transition completion value to 100%. You'll notice another keyframe is created at the time indicator position, and you'll see the changes on the program monitor. Let's see it again by playing the video. Now let's make some adjustments to the transition. At 0% the upper layer clip is fully visible and at 100% the underneath layer clip is fully visible. The transition starts from the dark part to the white part of the upper layer clip. You can reverse it by checking the invert gradient option so that the brighter part of the upper layer clip will be invisible first. 
followed by the darker part. Another setting to consider is the gradient layer video 2, which is the upper layer of the video. If desired, you can soften the transition by adjusting the value of transition softness. Next, right click on the first keyframe and select is out. For the last keyframe of transition completion, select is in to make the transition smooth. You can also adjust the transition duration for the base fit. After making these adjustments, play back the video to see how the transition looks. Now it's time for the second Luma fade transition. Firstly, copy the gradient wipe effect by hitting the Ctrl plus C key or right click on it and selecting copy. Then select both video clips, right click any of them and choose next. Give it a name if you want and click OK. Next select the nested video and hit Ctrl plus V key to paste the gradient wipe effect. You instantly see it in the effect controls panel with all the settings. Now it's time to adjust the mask. Click on the left arrow icon to select the first keyframe. Then click Max 1 to enable it. Change the zoom level of the program monitor to 25% and enlarge this monitor tab by hitting the accent key. Adjust the position of the masking points around the road. Select the two points and drag them to the left. Then select the right side of the points and drag them to the right. These changes are made for the first keyframe. After that select the last keyframe and make similar adjustments. Everything looks fine as expected. Now let's make a couple of adjustments in the gradient wipe effect. First move the time indicator to find the frame where the transition is completed. Then select both keyframes of the transition completion and drag them to the right. After that play with the time indicator and observe the transitions. Now drag this nested video to the upper layer. We have a third video on the timeline which is a CBH video. This video must be placed underneath the nested video. After that play with the time indicator to observe how the transition is working. It seems good but some additional adjustments are required for the CBH video. First make sure the underneath video is selected then go to the effect controls panel. Change the X value of the position to adjust the video's position. Take a little bit of time to make it better. If I move the time indicator slowly, you can observe that the white area of the nested video disappears first, followed by the dark area. Let's make some changes. First, select the nested video and navigate to the effect controls panel. Video 2 is currently selected. So now select video 1, which is the CBH video. Then observe the transition by moving the time indicator. You may notice that the dark water of the CBH video appears at the beginning of the transition, followed by white area. To adjust this, uncheck the invert gradient option and now see that the transition is happening from the left side of the frame to the right side, resembling waves entering into the forest. Here you can still see the importance of masking. If you refine the masking, the transition will be even better. At this stage, we need to bring the same CBH video to the right side of the frame. To do this, simply drag the first layer of the video to the right, then go to the effects tab and search for the crop effect. Apply this effect to the first layer of the video. Once applied, select the crop effect in the effect controls panel. Now drag the right side of the crop line to the left towards the center. Next hold down the alt key on the keyboard and drag this video up to create a duplicate copy. Then go to the effects tab and find the horizontal flip effect. Drag this effect onto the timeline and apply it to the upper layer of the video. To cover the background area ensure the upper layer video is selected then adjust the X value of the position in the effect controls panel. After making these adjustments, play back the video to ensure that everything looks ok. Now select both of these videos and nest them together. Finally, place the new nested video underneath the second nested video. That ends the Sam Calder Masking Luma fade transition. While it may not 100% perfect, you can enhance it by making some adjustments. For instance, you can select the second video and reposition the keyframes of transition completion. Additionally, you can do some color grading for proper manipulation. I'll include the link to Sam Calder's Cold My Year 2016 in the description along with other supporting video links especially on how to manage footage. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can watch other similar interesting and eye-catching videos on this channel. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video.